Welcome to the first installment of Introduction to Vacuum Techniques. In this video series, I aim to introduce you to the techniques required to perform research in high and ultra-high vacuum systems. In this video, I will focus on the uses of vacuum systems and some general information about how low pressures are achieved. We begin by addressing the questions, what do we mean by high and ultra-high vacuum? Why are they useful? And how do we build vacuum systems? High and ultra-high vacuum are just terms for two different pressure regimes. High vacuum systems have a pressure that lies approximately within the range of 10 to the minus 6 to 10 to the minus 9 torr. But this range can vary widely depending on who you ask. Sometimes, in fact, a distinction is made between high vacuum and very high vacuum. But when I refer to high vacuum, I will be referring to the range shown here. Ultra high vacuum, or UHV, is the term given to the pressure range less than 10 to the minus 9 torr. Many experiments can be conducted in the high vacuum regime, but UHV systems are very commonly used for high precision measurements, and I will be speaking for the most part about UHV systems in these videos. High vacuum and UHV are vacuum regimes obtained in advanced vacuum systems, but why do researchers go through the trouble of creating these extremely low pressure environments? There are a number of applications that require the use of high and ultra high vacuum systems. This is because of the incredibly low amount of interaction between experimental samples and low pressure gases. At atmospheric pressure, gases interact with experimental samples, coating them with layers of contamination, changing the surface chemistry. To counteract this, air can be pumped out of a closed system. In a chamber at high vacuum, there are few gaseous contaminants to interfere with experimental samples, but samples can still be completely coated with contaminants in just a few seconds. The lower the pressure, the more slowly a sample will be contaminated. At UHV, it can take several hours for surface contamination to take place making a detailed study of sensitive surfaces possible. This allows for atomic resolution in probing techniques such as atomic force microscopy and scanning tunneling microscopy, and also allows for excellent purity in growth mechanisms such as chemical vapor deposition. These and many other techniques are used under high and ultra-high vacuum, making it very important to know just what is required to build and maintain a vacuum system. This leads us to our next topic. What is involved in building a vacuum system? The most fundamental component of a vacuum system is a chamber, which is typically made of stainless steel or another material that is strong and does not release any gas into the chamber when it's at low pressures. In this chamber, devices of all kinds can be mounted on flanges and sealed to be vacuum tight by the use of copper gasket. On each flange is a metal ridge called the knife edge. When a copper gasket is placed between two flanges, and the flanges are tightened together using bolts, the knife edge digs into the copper, creating an excellent seal. This type of flange is called conflat. Other flanges exist that create the seal by using different types of gaskets and different mechanisms to tighten the flanges together, but the general principle is usually the same. The chamber and the flanges can be sealed as airtight as you like, but they're pointless without a way to evacuate the gas from inside the chamber. To do this, various vacuum pumps must be used. Traditional mechanical pumps have a high throughput but they cannot attain UHV on their own, and they have a host of other problems. For this reason, these pumps are used to pump vacuum chambers down from atmospheric pressure, but other pumps are needed from there. A number of pumps can be used to get to the UHV regime, including turbomolecular pumps, diffusion pumps, cryo pumps, and ion pumps. Each of these has different principles of operation, 
and advantages and disadvantages. Many researchers consider the ion pump to be the real workhorse of a UHV system because it introduces no oil contamination and has no moving parts. Yet, they're capable of attaining terminal pressures lower than 10 to the minus 11 torr in ideal conditions. There are many different tools that vacuum scientists become familiar with, and most systems are specialized to particular needs. But these videos will focus on showing general techniques useful to anyone new to working with vacuum systems. Thank you for watching.